I hate to tell you, but the introduction's better than the speech. Um, but um, I'm looking out here at Ashish, and um, in my new role, uh, I've had the former role of founder McGarry Bowen for a number of years, but the chief creative officer for Dentsu is some 60,000 employees, and um, it's, as I, as I said to our chairman, that's what I'm gonna do from one till three in the morning. But the, my favorite person in that network that I met a number of years ago is sitting right there. Of 60,000 people, my favorite person is Ashish. And Ashish represents for me something that is the essence of India, a sort of timeless wisdom, a sort of passion that sees from within and a gentle but strong grace. And I thank you for the invitation to be here. Um, perhaps you could run for President of the United States because our president doesn't have any of those <laughs> traits. Um, so, um, as was mentioned before, uh, the title of my speech is Data's Inferno. And for those of you that uh, have ever read Dante, you know that Dante, um, Dante's novel, if you will, is a, is a journey from hell into heaven. And so I've entitled this Data's Inferno and asking myself whether data is in fact heaven or whether it is hell. And so I thought perhaps I would turn to pop culture for the answer to that question and really look into the future. And interestingly enough, last night in my room was playing uh, on the English channel um, Star Trek. And so um, it seemed somewhat appropriate that I would pick from the future, the most tech-driven, tech-enabled tech android in the future, Commander Data, and um, from the Starship Enterprise. And so, to quote Shakespeare, or in a misquote of Shakespeare, this is what Commander Data says about his role as being an android. We are more alike than unlike, my dear captain. I have pores, humans have pores. I have fingertips, fingerprints, humans have fingerprints. My chemical nutrients are like your blood. If you prick me, do I not leak? Do I not leak versus blood? It's interesting to me. Um, so I talked about passion and I talked about Ashish and what I wanna talk about now is what data can do and what data cannot do. Uh, one of the things that we did for uh, United Airlines was something that data cannot do, which was bring four things together, music, story, fact, and artifact, in what was the most recalled and favorite advertising campaign for the Olympics for United Airlines. Where'd it go? Again, four things put together that data could never do, and yet, in fact, it was the number one most recalled, remembered, and liked advertising for the Olympics in the United States. Data also says the human ability to abstract is highly unusual. They seem to communicate through narrative imagery, a reference to the individuals and paces which appear in their mytho-historical accounts. 
and Dr. Crusher says, do you understand? And he says, the situation is analogous to understanding the grammar of language, but none of the vocabulary. So in an abstract kind of way, Fiat Chrysler came to us and asked us if we would launch a new car for them. We built this set in our studio in our own office and presented it to them and it ran unedited. So what was the power of that idea that we did in our own studio for about $10,000 from Fiat Chrysler? It won us the Jeep business, their largest single brand. So that was uh, quite a wonderful uh, thing that happened as a result of that little bit of creative. Commander Data says, when your girlfriend gives you a gift, stop whatever you are doing and give your, uh, you her undivided attention. And Commander Data says, even though she commanded me to do otherwise? Yes. And Commander Data says, I have a lot to learn. For this little film for Hallmark, we had been trying to get to the heart of Don Hall, the billionaire owner of, of Hallmark cards, for 15 years. Here's the spot. factoid from that, that particular greeting card with the red on it, they sold out in one day and the demand was so high they couldn't reprint them fast enough. Um, what else does Commander Data have to say? I'm attempting to fill a silent moment with non-relevant conversation. Ah, small talk, says Captain Picard. Yes, sir, I have found humans often use small talk during awkward moments. Therefore, I have written a new subroute for that purpose. How did I do? And Captain Picard says, perhaps it was a little too non-relevant. Uh, for Chevron, we took that which seemed to be irrelevant and made it relevant for what is, surprising enough, the third largest company in the United States and the largest company in California. 
This is a story about doers. It's also a story about canals and the artificial heart, electric guitars, and rockets to the moon. In other words, this is the story of America, land of the doers. Doing it. Did it. Done. Hard-working doers and smart-working doers. Olds changed the way we put things together. And keeping them together, that was Walter's doing. Doers built this country. They built the dams and the railroads. John Henry wants to see you driving down. Hmm, catchy. They built the Golden Gates and the Empire States. Doers turned nothing into something, and something into something else. Doing got this nation done, along with the hula hoop, blue jeans, and that little thing we call the interstate highway system. And all this doing, it takes energy. No matter who's doing. There's all kinds of doing up in here. Or what they're doing. What the heck's he doing? Energy got us here. And it's our job to make sure there's enough energy to keep doers doing the stuff doers do to keep us all doing what we do. So, interestingly enough, big oil is the category most disliked in America. And we went from the most disliked category to the mo one of the most liked, uh, certainly the most liked in the category, but one of the five most liked ads that was run, and it ran particularly in Washington, and Washington makes a lot of decisions about big oil. Just as an aside, the notion of doers seems to me to be an entire application for all of India, for what I can see, and I've, uh, I'm very impressed by everyone I've met and the attitude in this, uh, in this nation, which I can't get enough of. I keep coming back and back every six months. What else does Commander Data have to say? I have found that humans value their uniqueness, that sense that they are different than everyone else. It makes it extremely difficult to project their intentions, much less their actions. How does that relate to data? Well, let's see for this little ad for the Walt Disney Company. I am a princess. I am brave sometimes. I am scared sometimes. Sometimes I am brave even when I am scared. I believe in loyalty and trust. I believe loyalty is built on trust. I am a princess. I think standing up for myself is important. I think standing up for others is more important. But standing with others is most important. I am a princess. I believe compassion makes me strong. Kindness is power. And family is the tightest bond of all. I have heard I am beautiful. I know I am strong. I promise. And when I promise something, I never, ever break that promise. I am a princess. Long may I reign. So, as you all probably know, with the recent acquisition of 21st Century Fox, the Walt Disney Company is the largest entertainment company in the world. But what's really interesting is, from my standpoint, is that little ad we are told is the ad campaign that inspired the creation of the film Frozen. And as a head of an agency, although I didn't create it myself, all I did is approve it. Nevertheless, that's uh, a, a film that had a very positive impact in terms of what it meant to be a princess, because it meant that true love was not just that for a prince, but also for a sister. What else did, well now, changing the subject and maybe mood a little bit, what would um, Commander Data have to say about something like humor? I, Commander Data, I failed to understand why this is amusing. Access your data banks under humor, subheading slapstick. Comedy, stressing farce, and horseplay? Now do you see why it's funny? No, sir, but I will take your word for it. This little piece for Miracle Whip, who had a problem. Their problem was that they had not had sales increase in 14 years, and it was continuing to decline. On a scale from one to 10, I hate Miracle Whip at like 22. If you don't love Miracle Whip, you're incapable of love. Miracle Whip tastes like lotion, but sweet. And who wants a sweet lotion sandwich? That thing, a little tang, makes you go bang. Yeah, that's what Miracle Whip is. Definitely, I could never date someone who likes Miracle Whip, but I could possibly be your friend. You got these, like, fancy dancing mustards and stuff like that. that that's an elite kind of thing. Okay, Miracle Whip is America. Miracle Whip tastes like disappointment. 
like spreadable disappointment. Tastes like an exotic lady is kissing you, but she's got a little bit of sugar around her mouth. And then at the end, she goes, uh, caliente. And it's always great in the bedroom, you know. I would never eat it. I would never put it in my hair. It's just wrong. The secret ingredient, miracles. So what was really funny about that, sales went up immediately 16%. But what was more interesting is who would think a little brand like Miracle Whip would make every single talk show in the United States. Um, Commander Data says, um, the Commander Cho says, we're all more than the sum of our parts data. And Commander Data says, I am only the sum of my parts, though I do possess more of them. So perhaps, maybe, uh, we could turn to a machine, maybe Honda, and see if uh, perhaps these, having more parts could make a difference, at least. things that can't be done. Like less fuel in for more miles out. An impossible made possible. So not only did that ad win a gold line at Cannes, it won the rest of the Honda business for our London office, um, but it's certainly more than the sum of its parts. Commander Data, I would gladly risk feeling bad at times if it also meant that I could taste my dessert. Interestingly, this for one of the world's largest food companies. We took a, a cracker that is three ingredients and made it much more than that. Cuke Feta Minskit. Bako P. Chukalaskit. Avo Chikarachaskit. All it takes is just three ingredients on a Triscuit, and the possibilities are endless. Triscuit. Made for more. So, those of you might or might not know the Triscuit brand, there were two flavors when, before we launched this campaign. Now there are 11 uh, on the grocery shelf. Um, in terms Spicy of... Spicy pickle? Whoops. Uh, I wanted, I'm not going to read this whole quote, but it is about the notion of intuition. And for those of you that might have a small agency or have a big account that you want to win, let me tell you the power of a creative idea. We were pitching Intel. Uh, we wanted the business badly for our San Francisco office. And um, the chairman of the company came to us, at, not the CMO, the chairman, and he said, I have a problem. I have the most recognized sound in the world next to the sound of a human baby crying, which is the Intel bong. Many of you probably know that sound. Um, Number two, we have the most recognized line in the world in terms of the number of places that it sits, meaning Intel inside and the logo and circle that makes it. But the problem that we have is that they are all associated with PCs from the past. Should we keep them or should we not? Well, there's a dilemma for an agency pitching a business. And the next day, a woman came into my office named Marianne Besh. And she said, I have an idea. 
I said, um, and, and she said, just a gut. And I said, and I need your help. And I said, what is it? And she said, I want to take the Intel bong and I want to put it together with Beethoven's fifth and create the ultimate mashup of five nodes. Da 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 da, bum 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 ba, da 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 da, bum 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 ba. Number two, I want to take the Intel, um, if you will, inside logo and turn their little circle into a portal showing us where what, that which was invisible made visible. Because Intel's biggest problem, an iPhone is just a piece of plastic if you don't have an Intel chip in it, but they don't get all the credit. Steve Jobs got all the credit. So they were frustrated by that. And she said, but I need $50,000 to go make this film. Interestingly enough, I had the head of data was sitting in my office at that moment. And he, she said, that's the stupidest idea I've ever heard. And I said, that is a genius idea. I gave her $50,000 and said, go off and record it with the London Symphony. And here's the film. Those of you that weren't there, and there were only six of us there, this is what happened in the pitch. There were five agencies pitching. Um, we were number three, meaning the worst place you can be in a pitch. Uh, right after lunch, a sleepy audience, and I plugged this film in, and the chairman of the company pointed to me and said, I've never been in a pitch process before, but we are going to make that film, and you young men are going to make it. So they, we knew we'd won the business before two other agencies had presented. That's the power of intuition. I think my time is up. I would like to end with one thought. Um, Ashish, if I can show one piece of film, is that okay? Um, people ask us, how in the world did McGarry Bowen take the American Express business out of Ogilvy and Mather after 57 years? I don't even know the answer to that. It's sort of a miracle. Uh, but it was, a, I will say, honestly, it was not with a creative idea, it was a strategic idea that was accompanied by creative. But for those of you that follow American Express, Visa is the where brand, everywhere you want to be. MasterCard is the what brand, sell, with priceless selling what people sell. But American Express is the who brand, always driven by celebrity. But they wanted the celebrities to be more than just a face. They wanted to have values and stand for something that they stood for, in this case, small business. And they picked someone to represent them that I have huge respect for and cannot believe that I got to go on this set and shoot with him, which was Lin-Manuel Miranda. How many in the audience have seen Hamilton? Anybody? May I suggest that you see this? Um, but probably the most sought after celebrity in America. He was offered 17 Super Bowl ads. He only agreed to do this for American Express, and this is what he did. Don't forget that the past can speak to the future. Don't assume the substitute teacher has nothing to offer. <laughs> Same goes for a neighborhood or a community. Don't forget that friendships last longer than any Broadway run. Mr. President. What's up? 
I think you meant to say thanks for the call. <laughs> and that inspiration will strike while you're walking your dog or reading a book. Yeah, don't settle for your first draft. Don't settle for your tenth draft. You get to create the room where it happens. Just don't think you have to do it alone. Go out into the world knowing someone has your back. The powerful backing of American Express. Don't live life without it. So for those of you who don't know, still today, after three years, the average cost for a ticket to Hamilton on Broadway is $1,500, and they go up to $5,000, still to this day. My last closing thought is this. At, at Dentsu and at, we have a thought, and it's simply this, is three things, creatively led, data-driven, and tech-enabled. But it's creatively led. Nothing can ever replace creativity. If I go back to my original slide, Dante's Inferno, in this case, Data's Inferno, if you wish to get to paradise, I think that we would all recognize that we need to go to create. Why? Because in every language and in every culture, there is a single word and a single verb that describes God himself. God is the creator. The first words in the Bible are, and in the beginning, God created. It was not data-driven. It is creation-driven. Thank you very much.